lot of challenges. Probably working with an existing stadium and uh, trying to put the, a new roof on top of it was quite a challenge. I mean, and the constraints of this site in terms of uh, considerations of access for craneage, et cetera, were quite challenging. The masts are an integral part of the primary structural system. This system is a large cable truss. There have been a number of installations um, of the concept in Europe, um, but this is the first large-scale one in North America. Parts and pieces of this roof have been procured all over the world, really. The cables from Switzerland and Italy, cast fittings uh, and cast clamps from Europe, all parts of Europe and uh, Turkey. Uh, some of the steel fabrication was done in Thailand, uh, much of it all over North America as well. There's an enormous amount of this work that's been done using rope access personnel, which you could think of as like spider people hanging from ropes to install. I mean, it's pretty unique. The erection procedure that was developed by Structal was to build a large central tower of steel that allowed them to take the mast and using a temporary overhead cable attach that tower so the tower would resist the, the propensity of that mast to fall outward and to take wind load. And then once all those were installed and we were able to complete the compression ring, which you see around here, that large box member, uh, which is like the rim of the bicycle wheel, that tower was able to be completely removed. A big part of the early design and feasibility assessment relative to this was whether the existing building could carry additional loads and demands from this new roof system or a new roof system. That drove a lot of the decisions that went into the way this roof was designed. And part of that was that, of course, the seismic design considerations have evolved quite a bit since this building was built. And um, so we were very concerned about adding the seismic demand in a way that would, you know, uh, essentially overpower the, the, the resistance of the system. The dampers and that whole approach that Genovar took was really creative way to address that. And in the end, I mean, that's a fairly significant body of work, but two things that came out of that. One is that really the new roof, as much as it adds a lot of mass and now carries much more snow than the original air-supported roof, it uh, doesn't really add very much to the seismic demand of the, of the primary structural system of the building, the superstructure down, you know, into the foundations and shear walls. And that's because of the way we were effectively able to isolate its dynamic response from the building's dynamic response. And it uh, has to do with how we did the bearings of the masts and that kind of thing. But then the building itself has been made much better from a seismic standpoint by virtue of these stampers, which was a great solution. The biggest uh, challenge here from a construction standpoint, again, is that you weren't starting with a clean site. You know, you're, you're, you're doing it. This, this thing is a giant renovation. And anybody who's done a large renovation of anything from their house to a, a, any kind of building knows, first of all, nothing ends up exactly where you thought it was based on what you, you know, even measured or, or uh, looked at drawings. There was a lot of issues with that. And we gave a lot of thought to that in terms of how we, we designed the thing. But, even so, that always throws some curveballs at uh, construction.